Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Sports Central. I'm Neil Duncan. We have got a fantastic show. You won't want to miss a minute of the action. So stick around for this week's edition of Sports Central. Everybody. Welcome back to Sports Central. Neil Duncan alongside Sam Baker and uh, your first uh, opportunity to host on Sports Central. Exactly. Very excited. I think it's going to be a good show, but you're really the only judge of that, so we'll see <laughs> well, how this goes. I don't know about that. That's probably the guys in the production room. But uh, this segment brought to us by the Country Club of Winter Haven. Of course, a great course over there in Winter Haven, and they just hosted the... Uh, uh, Symmetra Tour and the mm -hmm. uh, the road to the LPGA great event out there and we actually hosted the radio version of Sports Central out there and of course you can catch that on Talk 1430 and Talk 96.7 but we've got a great guest in this first segment Sam and of course you're a, an alumnus I am uh, from Florida Southern College and we have Matt Holmes who just won a national championship in swimming so Matt uh, welcome to the show thank you for having me it's got to be exciting. Two-time, now two-time uh, national champion in the 400 individual medley. Uh, talk about that event and what it's like to win it the first time, but then come back and defend your title. Mm -hmm. um, well, it's one of the toughest events out there, that's for sure. Having to do all four strokes and uh, 100 of each, obviously. Um, it's really something that I really didn't start swimming until probably my junior or, so or senior year in high school. Really? Um, so it's something that I really didn't think I was the best at and apparently I am <laughs> um, but winning it my junior year was really special um, I was going against the three-time national championship champion before um, and then to kind of come back from two seconds down uh, starting the freestyle leg of the race um, and then winning it then by I think a thirteenth of a hundredth um, was really special and then coming back uh, my senior year uh, and defending my title was really uh, pretty sweet so well, let's go backwards. Let's, uh, for the viewers at home that maybe don't know what the 400 mm -hmm. individual medley is, because you talked about the four strokes. And mm -hmm. so talk about that and then talk about distance and what those distances mean. Right. Um, so for college swimming, uh, we swim in a 25 yard pool as opposed to Olympic swimming, which is a 15 meter pool. Um, and the four inch I am is really a combination of all four strokes. So you swim 100 yards of butterfly, 100 yards of backstroke, breaststroke, and then freestyle. Um, and it's really one of the toughest events out there. It's the longest that you take for uh, swimming all four strokes at one time, and it's really technical as well. So I take great pride in being able to swim that event and swim it well. So basically you're swimming the length of a football field in each stroke, and then back in a different stroke, and then like it's 100 yards, right? Well, yeah, basically. <laughs> um, but it's 25-yard pool, so you do four laps of one stroke, four laps of the next. Right, but the laps. equivalent of swimming all the yeah, way down a football. So yes. it's not a short distance. No, not really. And you have to do that four times. <laughs> yeah. It's, That's it's, unbelievable. It's a pretty long race, and uh, a lot of tough people swim it, so. I couldn't do that. No, definitely not. <laughs> and you talked about winning it your first year. Mm -hmm. And so what was your mindset going into the second year? Because, I mean, so many people say not, it, it's hard to get up there, but once you're on top, it's harder to stay there. So yeah. what was your mindset going into this season? Um, well, the end of last year, I, I didn't want to take a step back. Some people take, you know, a few steps back their senior year. They, uh, especially with swimming, you're in the pool constantly. You're doing weights. You're doing dry land, stuff like that. Um, so it really takes a toll on the body and especially on the mind as well. So going into my junior year, or finishing my junior year, going into my senior year, uh, I really didn't want to take that step back. So I kind of had more motivation to do well this year. So I put in a lot more work, put in a lot more effort in the pool. Um, and then to repeat as champion is really special. So you said you didn't start swimming until was it your junior year in high school or your senior year? No, I didn't swim this event my junior year. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, but you were in the sport. Yeah, I was in the sport. I, I've swum since I was eight years old. Okay. Um, my parents kind of threw me in the pool then, and it really took off. So. Well, <laughs> let's talk about. So my next question was: These weren't your first medals that you won when you got to college, but so no, you, no, it no. was just that 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 event. Uh -huh. Let's talk about what we have on the table here because there's a lot of hardware there. Yeah. Um, so I have. Four gold medals individual here from our conference swim meet. Um, that was in the 200 IM, which is the shorter version of the race that I won at nationals. Okay. Um, 
And then I have the 4IM, I have the 200 brush stroke, and I also have the 100 brush stroke. Um, we also have a gold for our 800 freestyle relay, which is a 200 freestyle. And then you have four uh, individuals who are swimming it, so they each swim a 200. Um, and then I also have uh, silver in, I forget which relay that was, but it was one of the other relays, and then a bronze as well. well you're apparently good at it. When you, when you can't remember <laughs> what your medals are, <laughs> Sam has one in his office. It's just one. He knows exactly. what it is. But I, didn't no, even, just I didn't even earn it, but it was just given to me. Oh. <laughs> and then the, the, the two trophies, the, the bigger mm -hmm. ones there, I'm assuming those are the national championships. Yes, this is the, the one on the left, the gold one, is the national championship. And then the 200 IM, I got second in that. Um, so that's the silver one there. Okay. Now let's go back to, uh, you know, how do you end up at Florida Southern? Mm -hmm. What was it about Florida Southern College? Of course, you know, we're very blessed here in Polk County. We know this to have great colleges and, and universities, but what was it for you that led you to Florida Southern and the swimming team? Well, um, I always knew I wanted to swim in college, whether that was D2 or D1 or mm -hmm. whatever the case may be. And honestly, I was looking D1 more, but I just really wasn't cut out for it. My times weren't there coming out of high school. Uh, so I just kind of looked online and I found there was a conference, um, Sunshine State Conference mm -hmm. within the state of Florida. I really wanted to stay in the state of Florida, so that helped. Um, and I saw the history of Florida Southern and that really caught my eye. So um, I knew it was going to be tough coming in and I'm thankful for the opportunity to be able to swim for Florida Southern College. And it was a really, uh, it's been a great time here. Um, so I'm a senior now, so I'm finishing up. So just kind of looking back, it, it probably was the best decision that I could have possibly made. So what's the major? What are I'm you looking a, to do? I'm a double major. I'm okay. a sport business management and a sport communication and marketing. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, any any aspirations to go further in swimming or are you? Uh... Um, I've thought about it. I've thought about just trying to compete at Olympic trials for the U.S., but I don't know. We'll see what happens. <laughs> And that's an event that we've had representation at, Florida Southern has at least, um, just a few years ago with a swimmer that was representing his home country of mm -hmm. Honduras, I believe, mm -hmm. um, that swam. So that would be an amazing opportunity. Yes, it would. Oh, fantastic. Uh, so let's go back to when you were little. Uh, obviously swimming, you said your parents threw you in. I, I'm assuming they would like you to say that a little bit softer than they threw you in, but uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, but talk about, you know, if, if there's youngsters out there that are watching this program and, and they see a, a young man such as yourself that uh, grew up swimming and then ended up winning a national championship mm -hmm. uh, here at Florida Southern. Uh, talk about commitment, talk about grades, talk about uh, what it means to stay healthy and, and be a finely tuned athlete that can accomplish something like that. Just talk a little bit about that and kind of where your life path has gone. Mm -hmm. um, so when I was little, I you know didn't really think much of uh, trying to stay healthy or mm -hmm. anything like that, what to eat, kind of stuff like that. You were really just going to club meets every you know couple of weeks and just kind of grinding it out in the pool as well for practice and really wasn't taking it as seriously as I thought you know maybe I could have um, there are a lot of club teams out there that swim two times a week every single day of the week I really didn't have that kind of exposure to that kind of club team um, I was kind of a once a day type person um, I didn't really do much outside of the pool either but I know kids now they're they're just going crazy <laughs> um, they're doing all sorts of stuff they're basically doing my schedule that I did when I was here at Florida Southern when they're 10 years old, 11 years old. Mm -hmm. um, and it shows, they're, they're really stepping up the game and swimming has become a very fast sport, um, faster than I could have ever imagined. <laughs> so it's, it's really, you know, the, the commitment is, is great. You have to stay committed, you have to stay dedicated to the sport, um, especially now. Um, but growing up, you know, again, really didn't see myself as a national champion and then coming to Florida Southern and really stepping up my game and being even more committed than I had before and then also staying committed in the classroom that's really important as well um, but I think swimming really kind of gets my mind off of you know the stresses of life and schoolwork and stuff and it really helps you think about um, what goes on there and then you can translate that as well into what you do in the pool so yeah that's fantastic was, was there ever a set of Olympics that you can look back and say you know, I watched this Olympics and it really got me inspired because over the years uh, there's been a lot of history of obviously event participation and, and sports participation 
spikes that you're following mm -hmm. uh, the Olympics in any one of those uh, sports or in the Olympics. Was there, you know, was Phelps somebody you were watching oh, yeah, or was there, was there that Olympics where you're like, okay, this is what I want to do. I really want to commit myself because yeah. of this. Yeah, I think the 2008 Olympics in Beijing when Michael Phelps won the eight gold medals, that really kind of triggered in my mind, like, this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I, I want to be like Mike, basically. Yeah, <laughs> just the new generation the of new Mike. Generation <laughs> Mike. Yeah, basically. Um, so yeah, that really inspired me. And then seeing um, Ryan Lochte as well, he right. was a great inspiration for me as well growing up. So those two guys really kind of brought swimming to the limelight and really excelled the sport to what it is today. Tell me what's more important to you personally. Obviously you competed for the team and the team is, uh, is important, mm -hmm. but you're gonna end up in, I take the rest of the program going through all the, uh, the records and, and top tens and, and, and uh, school records and things, but uh, twice named Sunshine State Conference Swimmer of the Year, like out of all the awards and all the things you've done, other than getting your degree, in case mm -hmm. your parents are watching, <laughs> um, what has been the most important individually to you? What, what was the biggest accomplishment you think? Um, for me, probably, honestly, winning it as a team, as a freshman, winning conference as a team, as a freshman. That was a special group, and it was something that we hadn't done since, um, unfortunately. But uh, just doing that, being with those seniors, those juniors um, that were on that team then, I really looked up to them, and it was really special to be able to uh, win it for the fourth year in a row at that point in time. Um, and that was something that I, I really cherish. So, yeah. Well. Matt, fantastic job. Great representation, not only of Florida Southern, but Polk County and uh, this whole community. So we wish you nothing but uh, good luck as you uh, graduate in, the, uh, in May and then uh, go forward with your career. But uh, great job. Thank you. Thank you. All right. With that, we're going to go ahead and head to break. And as we do, we're going to look at some footage of the Homeschool World Series. Uh, it's hard to believe it's already going to be time for that event back at the Lake Marble Sports Park. Sam and Neil will be right back here on Sports Central. This is our 19th year. This organization was started in the year 2000 with uh, six teams in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. The teams are, I'd say, mostly coached by dads. Some hire professional uh, coaches, uh, but it's mostly a homeschool enterprise. Very few of them have any facilities of their own. They. Uh, practice at city fields or whoever they can whatever fields they can find and most of them play uh, either some play public school teams and other private school teams in the in their states and this is sort of the big event for, that a lot of these teams plan for and finish up their season with Well, we love coming down to, uh, to Auburndale and to Polk County and to the facilities here, number one, because they're excellent facilities. Um, and number two, uh, for us, it just gives us a chance to play teams from around the country and come to a centralized location uh, where we can spend a week together, um, you know, competing at the game we love. And I know in a lot of the states where, where homeschoolers uh, play on their own individual teams. Um, there's not a state association or a state championship that you play for, so this becomes kind of like our national championship uh, at the end of the season. And coming to Polk County gives us a great opportunity again to, to come to a place with great weather, uh, uh, great facilities, and the people here are just great to, to um, have us down and, and welcome us as they do. County and the city have been extremely accommodating to us. And we hope it's a win-win deal and more and more families come down. We built in a, a day off in the middle of the tournament and 
we know there's lots of things to do and with the vacation rental home industry it's a it's a really a nice arrangement and, and the, the kids and the families if you can get if you can get mama on board they come so the nice thing about this tournament is that it provides an opportunity for teams at all different levels so doing the pool play at the beginning of the week separates out teams into Division One, Division Two, and Division Three. And at the Division One level, you're playing, you're playing teams that have a lot of college prospects, a lot of uh, excellent talent. And then the other teams that maybe aren't at that level are able to play other teams at their level uh, and again, play for a championship. And so I think the, the quality of competition here is as good as you get. Um, and, and again, for us, it's an opportunity to come and play at a, at a, in a championship atmosphere. I mean, our guys look for, this is what we look forward to every year. I mean, we play, we play our season, we have lots of milestones in our season, different local tournaments, different um, teams that we play, rivalry teams, but this is what we gear our season towards. And our guys, from the, from the start in February, we're starting practice, we're looking to, for, forward to the World Series in Florida. And, uh, and so, for them, this is, the, this is a highlight, this is the culmination of their season. Everybody. Welcome back to Sports Central. Neil Duncan alongside Sam Baker and the great, uh, great package there from uh, Homeschool World Series. It's hard to believe it's already that time of year for it to be coming back and it's a great event because uh, it lasts all week long because obviously with the homeschool mm -hmm. and, and the schooling the way it is, um, great piece of business there during uh, a slower time of the year. Yeah, it's coming up right at the end of this month. It'll be here yeah. before we even know it. Yeah, this uh, segment brought to us by the Hampton Inn Lakeside Village. Of course, there's a brand new hotel being built right next to them, but uh, great partners of tourism and sports marketing. Speaking of great partners, we want to welcome to the show now from the Ledger Media Group, Roy Fuco. And Roy, good to have you on Sports Central yet again. Yeah, good to be back. <laughs> you might be in the top five of uh, guests all time. I don't think I've been on that much, but okay. <laughs> no, I just mean quality. I don't mean quantity. No. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you always do a great job, you and your team over there at the Ledger Media Group. And, um, of course, we partner together for the uh, Polk County All Sports Awards and Hall of Fame induction ceremony every June at the RP Funding Center. And certainly could not put on that event if it weren't for the relationship with the Ledger Media Group. And, Roy, you've certainly been a part of that over the years. And we're going to have a discussion about some of these athletes that we might see uh, honored there at the Polk County All Sports Awards, uh, which is June 11th. But uh, as we're looking at, uh, of course, a, a great run um, in the fall sports, a number of championships, and then you look at the winner and you look at uh, what Lake Gibson did with wrestling and Lakeland Cheer, and uh, that circle of champions category yeah. is certainly going to be uh, full this year. But uh, let's turn to track. What is uh, what does the situation look like in track and field for Polk County teams? Well, it's kind of interesting because um, we have uh, the district start next week. Uh, 1A is Wednesday, 2A uh, for the Polk teams is Friday. And, um, you know, in 1A, we have Britton Music from uh, Layton Christian, who won back-to-back -back, uh, state titles in the 100 and, three, and the 300 hurdles events. And uh, it's hard to figure out where, she's ranked second in both, but she seems to just run well enough to win during the year, because, uh, and then when she runs at state, her, she'll drop like at least a half a second from her best time during the year. So, you know, she's favored to win, and they also have one of the top regardless of classifications, pole vaulter and Emily Branham, who's mm -hmm. a junior, mm -hmm. uh, she won last year, and I think she's ranked fourth overall, like in the whole state, you know, she's easily in 1A. Um, the, going up into 2A, the, um, Arian Smith is a kid to watch from Mulberry. He mm -hmm. was, he had a disappointing uh, state uh, meet last year because he was ranked number one in the nation in the long jump and just couldn't get his steps right in the uh in the long jump and he never he didn't didn't um make it to the final he didn't uh you know do anything um he's not he's still ranked one and two way in the long jump uh he hasn't done what he did last year yet i was talking to him at the county meet he says he's faster this year and he's that's been uh, actually affected his his uh timing in the long jump 
But uh, he's ranked one in, in uh, well, depending on what um, time you use, a win legal time, he's ranked second in the 100, but he has the fastest um, poke time since at least 2000 um, in, you know, for a win legal time of, uh, I think it's 10.39. And um, he's second in the 200 in 2A. Um, if you switch that to um, overall, well, one of them he's ranked one and two in second in the 200, and the other one timing, he's ranked second in the 100, first in the 200. There's a kid from uh, Dunbar who's uh, really good, so they should have a good battle at, uh, at, at State. Um, so, uh, he, so he's one, and he's a junior, so he's being highly recruited in football, so he's going to be one to really watch this year again and again next year. And then, well, speaking of football, I'm going to interrupt real quick because we have a little bit of breaking news in the world of football, uh, FHSA level, uh, some change up uh, with the state championships not being at Camping World Stadium in Orlando. Yeah, I just got uh, released today, this morning, and uh, while well, I was waiting to come on, and uh, the 1A and 3A is moving to Tallahassee which kind of makes sense because a lot of the small schools are up that way. Mm -hmm. um, and then the three, uh, 4A on up is going to be at back, the moving back to Daytona, mm -hmm. uh, which it was on and off. I mean, I know it was in the, right. in the mid, in the 90s, it was there for a while, for a number of years. So as far as Polk County teams, 1A and 3A, potentially going to Tallahassee, that's going to be your Fort Meads, your Frost Proofs. Yeah, victory, if they can victory, get over the hump in the semi. The, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then everybody else is going to probably end up going to go to Daytona. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. It's, Hopefully, uh, you know, get Lakeland back there to defend the title and or, or somebody from the yeah. county. And okay. Well, let's let's uh, change gears to softball. Speaking of a sport that numerous state titles have come uh, come to Bull County, and uh, of course you you look at Bartow, and before you say anything. <laughs> Everyone knows my love for Bart. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but uh, you look at Bart, of course, uh, Coach Rutenbar's back uh, after he was gone for a little while. Last, I think last year was his first season yeah, back. Yeah. Um, they look strong. I think they've only lost once or twice this season. Uh, Jenkins, of course, is strong. So talk about uh, softball in Polk County. Yeah, I mean, that's, that uh, 8A district that they're in, that's going to be, uh, that they're also in a tough region. Uh, yeah. Bartow beat Jenkins once this year, so they get right now, the, the, they'd be the number one seed, but they have another game to play. Um, Jaden Williamson, the mm -hmm. Bartos pitcher, she pitched a no hitter uh, up in Kissimmee last night at the Kissimmee Classic. Um, she's having her best year. Her ERA is maybe half what it was last year, and um, and she's one of the top hitters now. So um, Bartos hitting might be a little bit deeper, and they also have uh, Bartos uh, Jenkins lineup might be a little bit deeper hitting wise. Mm -hmm. And Reagan Moore is one of the top pitchers. So whoever's on when they play, um, you know, they're going to have probably battle for the district title. Um, if they both get out of the first round, they'll battle in the semifinals. Although um, it's a tough region. Wellington is tough. They've tripped up Jenkins in, in the past. And Royal Palm Beach is another team that usually uh, can cause teams trouble in the first round, regardless who's champion, who's runner-up. And then Winter Springs, who beat Bartow in the um, – Last week in the uh, Barto tournament, mm -hmm. uh, there, whoever if Jenkins or um, Barto got to the region finals, did play Winter Springs, and depending on one poll, they're ranked nationally, and another poll, they're ranked they were ranked behind Barto. So, but it's you know a quality program, so you know they're going to be tough. And then um, you know going down Lake Wales made it back was made it to the state last year. Um, they're just as strong as as have been now. It's kind of a weird week for Lake Wills. They um, they beat Jenkins early in the week, two nothing. Beat Reagan Moore too. Great win for them. They lose last night to Arbordale, who's having a down year. But Arbordale just three and ten. They lose four to three, uh, mm -hmm. and that was a district game. So um, and then Sebring's in that district, and Sebring's undefeated. So that's going to be um, you know that's probably be another situation where whoever wins that game. Uh, in the district final, we'll probably meet again in the dist in the uh, regional semis, um, and then you know McKeel has an outside chance of making a run. There, Hardy's been the dominant team. Yeah. They were state runner up last year. Uh, they split during the regular season. They got killed uh, earlier this week, but McKe um, but McKeel beat them earlier in the year. Um, so um, that's going to be another thing. Same teams battle for the district title. Whoever gets out of that will. Um, could make a run for the um, you know, the state again. Yeah. What about baseball? If memory serves, we haven't had a public school state champ from Polk County since '93, and then I think we had 
was it 95 Santa Fe? Yeah. Uh, one one. So any, it, it just feels <laughs> like, you know, we're selfish here in Polk County, so it feels like it's been a while. Anybody that might do it? Well, we've had a lot of teams make it over the years. Yeah. It's just, you know, hard luck. Like last year, Jenkins, I mean, really thought Jenkins was going to break that spell. And, and they lost. You know, Haines City made it a couple of years before that. You know, Winter Haven's made it a bunch of times. Lakeland, um, the the best district for for um, for Polk right now is the eight A, ten or eleven, whatever number they're, mm -hmm. they are. Um, Jenkins, um, Bartow, and um, Did you hear that, Bartow? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and and Lakeland are the top teams now. Lakeland is right now the two and zero in the district. They beat Kathleen twice. Kathleen's down. Mm -hmm. um, Bartow and Jenkins actually split. Right. So well, there's going to be a really good team that doesn't get out of district. Um, Lakeland might have the best pitching. They got Drew Butcher, um, Garrett Wilt, uh, uh, as strong as one-two punches are, they are. And you know, and Drew Butcher, however you say his name, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, he's also one of the top hitters. You know, this, his father took over as head coach this year. Um, Jenkins is probably the the most balanced. They got a, a really good um, you know lineup, really good you know pitching. They got um, uh, yeah Jake Aber, if I'm saying it right, uh, and Taylor Buffington, that you know top you know one two hitters in the county. Um, right. And then uh, Barto, they man, I don't know if they're gonna have the pitching um, to you know to make a strong run, but they got. Um, Casey Cribs and Jonathan Vastine, you know, Cribs had a walk off, I don't know if it was a home run, might have been a home run earlier this week to, mm -hmm. to uh, win. He's been having a great year at the plate. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, so those are the t really the top three teams in the, dis in, in the, in the county. Um, you know, sometimes it's hard to judge the smaller schools like Lake and Christian, solid team, six and three. Um, I happened to catch them last week at the Winter Haven tournament, probably on their worst day. They, they lost. Their starting pitcher hit six batters in one and two-thirds innings. Mm -hmm. uh, now, they, but if, uh, if, if they can, you know, get some of the DNA from their coaching staff, that might help them. Because, <laughs> um, you know, uh, uh, Blaine Fox is head coach. Uh, he brought in Matt Diaz last mm -hmm. year. Who was on the two thousand the two thousand the ninety five Santa Fe team that won? He was a starting catcher, he was a sophomore. Mm -hmm. Him and his brother Zach, uh, was the pitcher, um, I think Zach was the county player of the year that year, um, were two of the top players. And you know, obviously Matt went on to have a nice pro career. Right. And then the pitching coach that they brought in was Mike Bird, who's from Lake Wales, who ended up being drafted by the Cleveland Indians. Now Bird was um, a freshman when Lake Wales won, so he didn't play was on JV all that year but he was on the bench I'm pretty sure that he was brought up uh, one of the JV players brought up when they went to the playoffs so he, he, he at least sat on the bench when they uh, when um, Lake Wales beat uh, they think they beat Rockledge and then beat Leon for the title so well no uh, sh no shortage of talent uh, and seemingly there's going to be more uh, champions coming out of the spring because it looks like a, a really deep uh, pool of teams as usual but uh, Next time we get Roy on, we're gonna have to get him for two seconds because exactly. uh, is, I told you he's a wellspring of knowledge. <laughs> yeah, and we didn't even talk about the three A and four A uh, track athletes. That uh, you know, you had uh, Alicia yeah. Ruiz, who uh, is she's a sophomore and she's gonna, she's been setting records uh, right and left in cross country and track for Jenkins, and then uh, you know, so you know. And, the, and then the boys, the, the, the hurdler Tyson Williams, mm -hmm. um, he's just a junior. He's, there's some big things that they ex expect out of him. So, um, yeah, there's some, uh, some good track uh, this year to, to watch as yeah, well, the last couple of years. It's fantastic. And we don't want to give everything away. We want to drive people to uh, read the information. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, obviously, you can get your subscription to the ledger or go online. But uh, talk. Just briefly, we got about 15 seconds about uh, what someone would find if they went to the Polk Preps and, and the, the, the way you guys assemble the information there. Well, we basically I mean, we sometimes try to add stuff that's like stats or something that maybe don't get the paper, although right now it's a little bit reversed because I have to mm -hmm. set something up specifically to get stats looking right online. Right. Uh, but usually what we put online, what we have in the paper, um, you know, we have the stories, they, you know, if they go to the, you know, the Polk Preps, you know, it used to be a, a specific page, and now it's part of the main site. But right. it's all the high school stuff is compiled there, you know. So, okay. 
Well, that's um, the best way to keep up with it. Roy, uh, as always, we thank you so much. We we'll look forward to working with you uh, on the Polk County All Sports Awards. But thanks for all you do in covering these sports because obviously, you know, this is important stuff and uh, these are some of the, the greatest <laughs> years of people's lives. So thank you for chronicling them. Yeah, it's fun to do it. <laughs> all right. Well, this time of year, as we mentioned, it's hard to believe that uh, the uh, Homeschool World Series will be here. But before it gets here, the Sun and Fun Flying is going on right now. In, f in fact, just a few days ago, uh, the PGTV crew went out to Sun and Fun and caught this, uh, this package, put it together for us. So let's take a look at that, and Sam and Neil will be right back here on Sports Central. Thanks guys. I'm here at the 45th annual Sun and Fun Fly in an Expo. And as you can see, there are planes behind me. So let's go take a look around. All right, so I am here with Leo Brochet and he is the vice chairman of the workshops here at Sun and Fun. Um, now, what type of workshops do you guys offer? Well, we cover just about everything that you need for uh, building your own airplane. We've got a, we've got an engine shop, we've got fabric covering, we've got woodworking, we've got metal uh, riveting and whatnot. We've got metal shaping. We're doing cowlings and that type of thing. We've got a welding, uh, gas welding. We've got TIG welding. We've got electrical. Uh, we cover pretty much the whole, whole gamut of what you need to know. And all of our class, well not all of them, but most of our classes are FAA approved to where uh, mechanics, AIs can come to our classes and actually get points for their continuing education requirements. So the, the classes that we teach are the real thing. You know, it's, and most of the people that are instructing have mechanics license. A and P license. So, do you you need a lot of experience then to take these workshop classes? Not to take, no, not to take the workshops. The, the workshops are set up for complete newbie. You know, you don't need to know anything when you come in. Just just have an interest in aviation and be interested in building. Do you need to bring your own equipment, or is that provided? We have everything here for you. All you have to do is walk in, bring yourself. That's great. So, um, what's your uh, favorite class here? Well, since I teach in the electric, I've, I'd have to say electric. <laughs> but I really like them all. I've, I've filled in in most all of them, and uh, I like them all. Well, that's awesome. Thank you so much, Leo. <laughs> Looks like there's a lot to learn here at Sun and Fun. here with some of the students from the Lakeland Aero Club and I am with what is your name? Andrew. Andrew, hi. And what have you guys been working on? What is this? Um so we are rebuilding the engine from this club and uh, we have people from Alabama that are professional mechanics that work with these engines and they are here to show us how we build them and so far we put the rods on and we put the bolts on, put the we put the washer thing on there and they're teaching us how to put it together. That's awesome. So, um, do you guys, what schools are you guys from? Are uh, we're all from CFA, Central Florida Aerospace Academy. Do you have to go to school there to be able to participate in this club? No, ma'am. You don't have to go. We have people from Jacksonville. We have people who volunteer to come to the club. So, do you all have an interest, like, are you wanting to pursue aviation and building airplanes for your future career? Yes, I'm being a mechanic. I just passed my Glam Aviation course, so. I'm so sorry, what is your name? Noah. Noah, oh, mm -hmm. that is awesome. Um, how old are you guys? Are you all? Um, they're all around 16 and they're already putting together this thing, which I wouldn't even know how to start. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. <laughs> Susie Okush, and she is the vice chair here for the International Welcome Center. Um, so how long have you been doing this, Susie? Since 2008. 
what is your favorite thing about working here for the International Visitor Center? Meeting people from all over the world. Do you I mean people from Russia, China, Japan, Philippines were here, South Korea, all over. We have all kinds of cadets that are English. We have people from Australia, New Zealand. I love meeting all these people. They have great stories. So tell me a little a story about some people you've met or how you've helped them learn about sun and fun and everything. I just met a pair of twins today. They're both from the Netherlands. One lives in Scotland. She told me her sister was coming. Her sister came. I didn't know it was a different person. <laughs> wow. You're gonna volunteer with us next year. And if you do want to volunteer, you don't have to speak a language. We will accommodate because we have all kinds of international visitors who speak English. That's awesome. And so can anybody just come by and say hi to you? Yes, definitely they can come by and say hi. I would love to say hi. I'll be here all week. <laughs>
and the expectations to perform athletically as well. And that's, that's what you want to be a part of. Absolutely. We're not going to allow Sam to talk at all during this segment because um, <laughs> he doesn't really care for Florida Southern. Yeah, yeah. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just no. a joke. Obviously, he is a, an alumni of Florida Southern and, and shares that same passion. Uh, but you look at 2013 began as the assistant athletic director uh, for NCAA compliance, 2015 promoted to associate athletic director for internal operations, and then 2018 promoted to senior associate athletic director. I know you just alluded to it a little bit, but talk about how that on the job training mm -hmm. kind of creates that environment where, uh, you know, one thing to get a job somewhere and you kind of learn the lay of the land, yeah. but then to, in being the athletic director, you have to have your hands on so many mm -hmm. things, so many irons in the fire. How did that develop you for this, this opportunity? Yeah, it was really fortunate timing for myself professionally. I came in at a time where Pete and the rest of the administration really needed an extra hand in a lot of things. And so essentially, as soon as I had a chance to kind of figure out compliance specific to Florida Southern, um, I said I was willing and able to do whatever. And I got pulled in a lot of different directions sports information, a lot of our HR processes, overseeing sports, uh, a lot of our hiring and firing. Uh, and it was really just good timing. You know, it, it, sometimes you got to get lucky, right? Like yeah. it, it can't always be that you're really good. Sometimes you got to get lucky. And uh, I was able to um, just fill need when it was right. And so I was able to get a little bit of everything. And as AD, that is expanded exponentially, even more so. But we're really fortunate to have a really good coaching staff, a really good administrative staff, so that, yes, I can help uh, spin a lot of plates and keep things going, mm -hmm. but we have people who are in their areas doing a really good job. And um, Pete always said, and it's something that, that I saw and bought in right away, we hire good people and we let them do their job. And we want our coaches to coach, we want our administrators to do what they're expected to do, and it just we expect to be at a high level. I was just kidding. You can talk. Okay, good. I was just trying to make sure. <laughs> just kidding. Well, uh, talk about the expectations. Uh, obviously, Florida Southern has won a lot of national championships. Florida mm -hmm. Southern has won a lot of conference championships. Mm -hmm. And of course, we just had an athlete here yeah. early in the program that has won that individual national championships. So that even raises that number you yeah. know, even more. Um, talk about what that expectation looks like each year. Sure. Because uh, I know Dr. Kerr has been fantastic, not only in, in um, kind of, I don't want to say rebuilding the campus, but it's had a makeover, certainly, yeah. and a lot of new buildings and things like that. But obviously, to compete at any level in sports, it's an arms race. Whether you're talking about Alabama football, sure. or you're talking about, you know, sure. whatever, it's an arms race, and you have to keep up with it, not only on the academic side, but on the, uh, the training facility. So talk sure. about the expectations and maybe what the next five or ten years look like at Florida Southern College. Yeah, Dr. Kerr and the administration have been great at uh, giving us a lot of the tools we need to stay competitive. Um, we have a beautiful campus, uh, Sam knows very well, um, and you have athletes like Matt Holmes who was on earlier who kind of embody what we're looking for. Um, but that pressure to win is, you know, we don't have to have a lot of conversations about what you're, how many games you're supposed to win. Because you walk in and you see 30 national championship banners, you see the top finishes, you look on through the history on the website, we don't have to tell the coaches you got to win a lot of games. They know that. They feel that mm -hmm. pressure day in mm -hmm. and day out. Uh, and that's just kind of the expectation we set. We try to do that in everything we do, not just in how we perform on the field. Um, we're fortunate with a lot of our facilities. You know, we just finished the Barnett Athletic Complex two years ago, softball on campus, finally brought, you know, national championship quality team, women's across on the campus, mm -hmm. and a very competitive men's across team on campus for the first time. Uh, and really renovated the soccer situation on campus and uh, we've taken over Henley Field and trying to make it a little bit more our own uh, but really fortunate with a lot of our facilities and that is part of that arms race but what it comes down to is if you can't recruit kids to Florida Southern College in the middle of Florida you can't recruit kids mm -hmm. it's plain and simple it's a beautiful campus it's a beautiful location the academics are excellent and we want kids that want to come in and be young student athletes who want the academic pressure, want to win, want to be really good at their craft. Uh, and the coach's job is to go out and find those kids. And Sam saw it really close up personal with men's basketball. Mm -hmm. and, and it is day in and day out uh, commitment to um, being at the championship level. And that's academically, we got to go to class and that's on the practice facilities. and then it turns into competition, which is what people see. But it's a, it's a day in and day out grind for all of our student athletes uh, to try and achieve what they're trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. 
Yeah, I mean, and, and everything you say I can attest to, just seeing every athlete at that school, um, it's a grind every single day. You don't have athletes that go and say, oh, we had an easy day today, no, no days are easy. It, it really is, they have that pressure to, we're gonna show up, we're gonna win, and if we're not winning, what, how, what are we gonna change yep. to get to that point? Seeing that in the basketball team that um, I was able to work with, they say, why did you come to Florida Southerns? Because we came here to win a championship. Um, and they do that. They, they come and, and the men's basketball team wins uh, conference championship. Women's basketball team wins conference championship. Yeah. Matt Holmes, our swimmer, wins national championship. It, it's, it's an expectation and it's, it's gonna happen or we're gonna make it happen yeah. kind of situation. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's uh, a long history, as we've said, and was it 30, 30. national championships? Mm -hmm. And counting. So, and counting. So let's look at um, the current talent. Obviously, basketball, sure. uh, boys and girls, men's and women's, I guess I should say, came up a little bit short of, mm -hmm. of, of reaching uh, the national championships. Uh, that uh, what are we looking for? Obviously, you said lacrosse. So let's look at not necessarily this year, but let's look at next year. Let's look at, um, or maybe I'm fast forwarding too much. Let's look at baseball and maybe where's that next national championship coming? Sure. From? I mean, the rest of the spring we have yeah. we have some options, right? Women's across is top ten in the country. Right. Um, they're reloaded after losing a class that was arguably one of the best classes yeah. in yeah. any sport we've had yeah. in a long time three national championship game appearances, a national championship to their name. So they've reloaded their top 10 in the country. They're gonna be, we're expecting them to compete for a regional title. And after you get to the regional title, anything can happen. Mm -hmm. It's just matchups and healthy and all those fun things. Men's women's golf yeah. uh, have had very good years. Amanda Gartrell, Polk County native, just won tournament yeah. last week. Uh, her first win of her career. Men's golf historically at Florida Southern is, is unbelievable. A lot of young talent. We had to replace probably two of the best golfers in Division Two that have been yeah. playing in a long time. Uh, but any of those teams really have the capability to potentially win a championship this year. I think, not to interrupt, but I think yep. you have a couple uh, ladies on that team from, from Polk County, right? Because Lauren Perez is from yep. Barto as well. Yep. So two or three of them are yep. from actually from Polk County. So I mean, you talk about recruiting. Yep. It's, it's got to be good for recruiting when you have a, 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 a talent pool like you have in Polk County. It's great. It's a lot of fun for, for us when we have local kids because we get you know their families and their connections and mm -hmm. and you get to see them uh it's not just in the paper in the ledger you get to see them right. uh, in person you know at home competing for the box and their red so we always enjoy any local yeah. talent we can get yeah. you know next year is going to be a, a fun year we you never know right who what recruits show up and who comes in uh volleyball is a perennial postseason team yeah. men's women's basketball while they both didn't win national championships, they both won conference basketball mm -hmm. tournaments right. this year. We're the only school in our conference, Sunshine State Conference, to ever do that, uh, to win both conference uh, tournaments in the same year. Uh, so we're expecting big things from both those programs. The women really have to reload, losing some uh, elite talent. But baseball, softball, both golfs, uh, lacrosses. We have great tennis programs that are building in the right direction. Uh, I know I'll forget some folks, but we have a, we have a lot of talented men and women on our campus. I think there was a great story, and we're gonna have to go to break in a second. But I think there was a great uh, story, and I, I'm pretty sure it was in the ledger talking about your your men's basketball coach and and how things, you know, after winning the national championship, then it was kind of like uh, it took uh, a step back or whatever. And you know, he was thinking, oh no, I'm I'm gonna be out of here. But uh, uh, Pete was like, no, no. It it, it was a, it really the story was about there was a plan, mm -hmm. stay the course, and do those things. So. Though there is the environment of win, and, and, and the, it's not win at all costs. It's, no. it's stay to a program, stay to a system, mm -hmm. stay to what is right for Florida Southern, and look where the men's basketball team is. So I just thought that was a it was a great story by someone we just had on sure. on the on the program, but uh, a great example of partnerships and, and believing in something. It well, seems like that's what goes on at Florida Southern. We want to win, but we always want to win the right way. Right. And you know, there you saw all the missions and scandals last week on colleges across the country. Yeah. We want to do things the right way. Mm -hmm. And so even though we, we do want to win and that is an expectation, uh, there are times situations where we have to be patient and we have to allow something to rebuild. Men's basketball, the yearly one title, graduated six seniors and the head coach left to go to a Division One program right. and it takes time. You yeah. know, that's one of the most competitive sports in Division Two. So mm -hmm. it does take some time, but we have to do it the right way. All right. Well, thank you so much. And again, Drew, uh, congratulations to the new athletic director of Florida Southern College. And I don't think there's been, I don't I remember looking at the list. It's not been a long list. No. Uh, and, and you're a young guy. Yep. So uh, uh, we look forward to working with you for many, many years. Thank you. Appreciate you. 
All right. Well, one of the features here on Sports Central is the Athlete Spotlight, and we like to look around the county and look at some of the young talent. And Stephanie Batista from Lake Region Soccer, uh, she is going to be featured right now. Sam and Neil be right back here on Sports Central. I first started playing soccer when I was in kindergarten, so about five, six years old. It was it was more of my parents because my whole family, my cousins, my brothers, my, all my siblings played soccer, so they put me in. I was playing for Winter Haven Youth Soccer Association, so that's where it all started. So I ended up with the team with my cousins, and it was lots of fun. What I like about it is the game, the passion I have for it, um, the, the girls on the teams, um, how everybody interacts, um, the outside stuff, not just soccer, like after games, go eat with your team, and all that good stuff. Well, my skills, communication have came a long way. Um, also, the people around, the people made it more fun, of course, the coaches, um, a lot of people have impacted my soccer throughout the years. There has been like a lot of difficult times, especially when you get injured, you just sit there and you get frustrated knowing that you can't play something you really like playing. Seeing, sitting on the bench, seeing everybody else play but you is really difficult. Um, those are the big obstacles when you're playing soccer. I think the hardest part in playing soccer is definitely staying in shape because once we go on break or once we take some days off, you come back and you're really out of shape. So you have to like maintain you being fit and all that. Runs are really important. They really keep you in shape. Working out as well, going to the gym. Um, you can also always contact your teammates, hey, come on, let's go, um, let's go for a jog, let's go run in the park, um, play indoor soccer, that's always an option. What pushes me through is definitely wanting a spot on the field because once you, because everybody's trying to be the best version of themselves, so if you start getting unfit, um, unhealthy, start being lazy, someone else can always replace you. There's always somebody that's always there available that's wanting more than you. Just because you're a good player on the field and your personality isn't good, sometimes it's not the best for your team. Uh, last year, we lost one of our players and that obviously helped us grow together as a family. Um, we also helped each other go through stuff. If we need, if we ever need somebody to talk to, they're there for you. So, growing as a team is important in soccer because they end up being like your family. My favorite memory has to be all the team bonding activities we do. They're so much fun. My coach has impacted my life by helping me whenever I need something. Um, if I, need, if I ever need anything, she's always there. She's, if I ever want to go into playing college soccer, she'll help me. Um, any, just any questions I have, she'll be there. I'm a senior, and so after high school, hopefully I'll be running for college cross country. Hopefully I'll be a nurse practitioner. everybody, welcome back to the fourth and final segment of Sports Central. Some great action there, but uh, this fourth and final segment brought to us by the Trophy Shop, great partners of tourism and sports marketing, and we appreciate them. Well, uh, great show, and mm -hmm. uh, we've only got about six minutes left to go in the show, but real quickly, a heartbreaking loss uh, for the Lakeland Magic in the Eastern Conference Championship game. Uh, 
one missed shot away from going to shot. the G League Championship in only their second season. Mm -hmm. uh, but what a heartbreaker. They lose to the Long Island Nets. They lose to the Long Island Nets, but the team did its job. It's, it's a development team and a yeah. development league. And yeah. so we saw three different players co go up to the NBA um, on assignment. Uh, with Troy Copain, Emil Jefferson, and then B.J. Johnson, who got mm -hmm. called up for the rest of the season with the Sacramento Kings. So best of luck with all of them, and uh, congratulations to a great season. Yeah, we showed it earlier, the 45th annual Sun and Thun Fly-In. It's going on right now through Sunday, so you definitely want to get out there. Uh, the main reason, it's a cool event, but a secondary and, and, and a worthwhile reason, it's the largest fundraiser for the Aerospace Academy out there uh, at the, the high school campus there at Sun and Thun. Uh, and the reason that's important, there's a huge shortage shortage of pilots, there's a huge shortage of mechanics that work on planes. So if you enjoy that convenience of travel, go out there and support Sun and Fun because it's a fundraiser uh, as they're developing um, pilots and mechanics. Explorations 5? Yeah, so Explorations 5 tomorrow, April 6th, uh, 10 a.m. to 4. It's a spring celebration uh, held in support of the National Week of Young Children. It includes Desmond Early uh, Childhood Activities, uh, access to the museum's learning environment, and uh, plenty of giveaways, so that'll be a great, uh, great event for them. And their their location is out at Munn Park in downtown Lakeland, so head out there. Yeah, and also this weekend, uh, which is Saturday, April sixth, I think we, we skipped over it. Mm -hmm. um, the Florida Tropics, their last indoor uh, game at the RP Funding Center against the Baltimore Blast. I believe Baltimore's won the uh, indoor championship three straight years. Uh, but that's going to be tomorrow, April sixth, at seven o five p.m. at the RP Funding Center. So if you have a chance to get out there and support that mm -hmm. a lot of events going on this Plenty. weekend it's that time of year uh, so as we're uh, we're live now but uh, April 5th and 6th rocking on the river uh, that is at the FFA leadership uh, facility uh, on the lake of Lake Pierce excuse me on the shores of Lake Pierce uh, and it's going to feature Daryl Worley who is a uh, country artist and then so much other music but the cool thing about this is the event is free now if you park for one day it's ten dollars and if you get the parking pass for two days it's 15 but even that doesn't go to the event organizer that goes to uh, the Polk County Special Olympics but the overall event raises money uh, for autism awareness so a great event there at the FFA Leader, uh, Leadership Training Center on Lake Pierce uh, you definitely want to go and check that event out of course and then next weekend we are welcoming back the Ironman Florida 70.3 long-standing tradition in this area um, but Friday April 12th is when it'll start it'll go until Sunday April 14th and this is a 70.3 total mile race triathlon with a swim a bike and a run all throughout uh, Haines City and the surrounding area too so um, if you're looking to volunteer or watch uh, definitely head over to their website uh, and, and check them out yeah, and of course uh, we hosted uh, this fall the full Iron Man. Of course, Panama City Beach mm -hmm. was devastated with the hurricane, and uh, Polk County came together. And special thanks to the city of Haines City. So they not only were able to accomplish that event with a great uh, deal of partnership, uh, but here it is again at Lake Eva, and Lake Eva really is perfect for that. Uh, the Flying Tigers are back. Of course, the Tigers, Detroit Tigers, are back uh, in Detroit. So the Lakeland Flying Tigers they actually started last night and won their first. Uh, uh, game of the season, but uh, a full list of uh, games at uh, LakelandFlyingTigers.com, and of course they're taking place at the Publix Field at Joker Martian Stadium. We've got some sponsors we want to thank? Yeah, we definitely want to thank our sponsors that help make this show happen. So we want to thank the Cleveland Heights Golf Course, Abuelos, uh, the Hilton Garden Inn, Ovation Bistro and Bar, and Peebles Barbecue. Thank you so much to our partners that uh, you know do such a good job with us. Absolutely, and of course, tune in to our radio version of Sports Central every Tuesday morning from 7 to 8 a.m. and every Thursday from 5 to 6 p.m. and that's on Talk 1430 and Talk 96.7. Uh, so you get the AM version and the FM version. But uh, Hall Communications, they're great partners because also on Tuesdays we get to go on Max 98.3 mm -hmm. with Eric and Mike and the uh, morning show on 97.5 WPCV. And it really gives us an opportunity uh, to promote what's going on uh, here in Polk County. Of course, if you want more information on events going on in Polk County, you can go to centralfloridasports.com or visit centralflorida.org. Uh, not too bad, kid, for your... Uh... Thank you. I've learned from the best. Mr. Jackson? Oh, no, I was talking about... No, uh... you, you need to say yes. Okay, yes, Mr. Jackson. <laughs> <laughs>
Sorry, see, I'm still learning. That's, yeah, that's, that's what this happens. When it comes to Mr. Jackson, the answer is always yes. So yes, sir. Come on, Sam. Uh -huh. <laughs> but, uh, hey, some great guests here today and uh, really leads to that, uh, that event, which is the biggest night in sports, which is June 11th at the RP Funding Center. That'll be the Polk County All Sports Award and Hall of Fame induction ceremony. In the next few episodes of Sports Central, we're going to have some of those inductees to the Hall of Fame. Uh, but if you, again, if you want more information, centralfloridasports.com. Our next live show will be April 19th. But until then, for Sam Baker, I'm Neil Duncan, and we will see you next time.